Hey, good morning, everybody. Um, coming uh, from you from Pittsburgh on, on game day uh, for the Steelers. Have an old Western PA guy here, Ian McDonald. Um, you know, part of the part part of the continuing series of interviews that I'm doing with coaches from around the country and in all sports and divisions. And I'm happy that Ian. Uh, found the time, especially coming into Christmas now to sit down with us. Uh, I have to say, you know, it's, it's probably he's, he's going to get some shout outs from me. I mean, uh, he's at the University of Charleston as their re baseball recruiting coordinator. And that's where I went to school and played baseball. So I'm going to give, give a little hand clap there. Ian, you know what? I'm just going to turn it over, uh, give you the show, ask you a couple questions, and I'm just going to, hey, introduce yourself to everybody. G give us your, your bio and background. Sure, Tom. Thanks for having me on, and uh, uh, it's always great to connect with a, a Charleston baseball alum. Um, you know, as far, as far as my background and, and, and where I'm from, um, yeah, I think I'd, I'd first be remiss if I didn't talk about my family. Uh, mom and dad, they're, they're two of the most impactful people in my life, uh, older brother, older sister, those people I love dearly. So I think just, uh, you know, who I am today um, and who, the man I'm working to become, I think is in large part toward their impact in my life. Um, you know, I think from a baseball standpoint, Tom, I, I've really been fortunate. I've had a chance to be coached by some unbelievable coaches and, and even just dating back to Little League and, and senior baseball. I, I grew up in South Central PA. Um, had a chance to, to play for, um, you know, guys like Coach Tomeki and, and the Wagner brothers at Goags and Carmen Fusco, who was a long, long time MLB executive. And, and then even in high school with, with Coach Brinson and Coach Helsley, like, um, you know, I think not only did they teach the game at a really high level, uh, but I think early on I, I really figured out that, listen, this game and, and the coaches, they can have a bigger impact than just teaching you the X's and O's in the game. Um, so they kind of put that in perspective for me. And I think the reason why I wanted to become a coach, even dating back to when I was in high school, uh, was because of them. Um, and then fast forward outside high school, I, I got to Geneva College, uh, small D3 in, in Western Pennsylvania, and um, had a chance to work under a fantastic pitching coach, Bill Ackerman. And and a great head coach and coach Sumner and, and um, really got a chance to, to beat some of my best friends. And, and, and again, like when you talk about, you know, people and, and experiences that have impacted me, it's uh, Geneva that over the course of four years, I learned so much. Um, so, you know, throughout my, I guess from where I got my coaching start, Tom, my, um, you know, I was, when I was in college in the summers, I spent three summers working for Carmen Fusco um, and he ran a, a summer baseball camp and it was the coolest thing ever. It was Monday to Friday and it was 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. So it was five hours of baseball, five days a week. And, uh, you know, it was, I think it was about eight or nine weeks in duration. And in the first two years I worked for him, um, I, I worked with him at the high school age group. And then the third year that I worked for him, um, I worked with the young guys. So I'm talking the nine to 12 year olds. And, and when you got to have a plan for nine to 12 year olds for five hours a day, five days a week, like you better be organized. So I think even just working for Carmen, I, I learned the importance of organization. I think I learned the importance of simplification. And, and I think I really, I, I learned how to teach the game. And it's something I'm still learning about how to do, but I think that was a start for me. Um, so that's where I kind of got my start with, with coaching baseball. And then I, I graduated from college um, you know, thought that, that the business world was something I wanted to do, figure it out pretty quick. I don't think I'm, I'm cut out to be in a, a desk chair for, for eight, nine, 10 hours a day. Um, you know, but, but when I was working in marketing for about a year and a half after college, um, you know, I think, A, that re experience really, it was valuable to me just with, you know, building a brand. And, and I think, um, you know, being alongside really talented people and, and working alongside our sales team at the company that I was at. So I think I learned a lot through that experience. Um, but I think, you know, even when I was doing that, I was doing baseball instruction in the evenings, just part-time, you know, a way to kind of get, stay involved with coaching, make a little extra money. And, um, 
I'm really fortunate. I, I've been, I worked pretty much for one facility uh, that whole time that I was doing instruction. Um, and, and the guy that ran the facility also had a, a group of travel teams. So Matt Diesel was Seal City Select and Diesel Edge Training Academy. So, um, you know, he, he had two full-time employees and, and eventually a position opened up um, where, where I could move from a part-time instructor to a full-time employee of his. And, um, you know, I think such, there's, there's such value in instruction, just in the fact that you're doing it pretty much Monday to Friday, right? You know, 2 p.m. to 9, 10 p.m. Um, and you're working with kids that you could have an eight-year-old for an hour, and then you could move on and teach a college-age kid for an hour, right? So you had to, you had to have the ability to teach uh, really the same game but in different ways and at different, you know, varying levels of difficulty and advancement. So uh, that was valuable. And then, you know, even on the, on the team side, I had a chance to do um, kind of operations work for the high school division. Um, so as far as, uh, you know, scheduling and budgeting and, and uh, training coaches and, and obviously, um, you know, kind of serving, I guess, in the, in the customer service where you're, you're working with kids and parents, you know, in, in good times and bad. Uh, you know, I think that was, that was a valuable experience as well. Um, you know, when I was working for Steel City, had a chance to volunteer at Grove City College, um, work for Matt Royer and, and alongside Kyle Sasala, which are both incredibly talented baseball people and, and, and talented recruiters. And um, I was there for a little less than a year. And then the opportunity opened up at Charleston under Andrew Wright, um, went there as a volunteer assistant. Um, it was a really amazing spring to be a part of. We, we won 41 games, uh, won our conference championship, went to a regional, won a regional, went to a super regional. Um, and it, it was just a product of, I think, being at the right place at the right time with the right people and having a really incredibly talented group of players. Um, and then, you know, after that season, Andrew, he got hired by the Yankees. And, uh, you know, Coach Robbie Britt, he's our head coach now, he came in and and uh, I was fortunate that I got a chance to, to stick on his staff. Um, I actually became a graduate assistant and kind of worked my way in the recruiting coordinator role. And, and um, you know, that's kind of fast forward to where I'm in today. Uh, you know, Tom, I, I've had a chance to work at the travel baseball ranks at Division Three, and, and now I'm currently at the Division Two level. That's cool. Uh, well, you know, it, and it seems like, it, you know, you're – you're young, but I mean, you've been around and uh, I have seen you all over the place and in, in my travels and your travels, we cross paths uh, a lot. Um, being that, I, that I'm a, a University of Charleston guy, um, you know, I, I coached there under Coach Nazika and, and with Roy Cole and, and everything, uh, no, Coach Bradley, who was in there, and then Andy when he came in, and you guys. So I mean, I really try to keep a a great relationship with you guys. Um, gonna go into now uh, um, your position at, at UC. You're you're the recruiting coordinator. Um, you know, a lot of people will send send stuff my my clients you know who do i send my my stuff to who do you talk to and everything talk a little bit about what a recruiting coordinator is ian and then just you know your responsibilities what what you what you do for the baseball program sure tom um you know, I, I think, you know, my responsibilities as a recruiting coordinator, it, it's really to collect the information that we need um, to organize it in a way that it's readily accessible and then prioritize the information we collect and really the players that we end up recruiting, right? So that's how I would, I would describe my role. Um, you know, I, I'm fortunate, Tom, I got the chance to work alongside really talented recruiters. You know, so I think really – you know, what, what I, when I'm talking to kids and, and I'm giving them kind of a roadmap of what this process is going to look like, um, I'm a Philadelphia 76ers fan. So I, I was an Allen Iverson fan growing up, and I said, I'm trying to be like AI. I'm trying to be the point guard and, and trying to connect you with different people within our program, uh, but then also, you know, throughout our athletic department, throughout our university. Um, so, you know, obviously, you know, I, I do do a lot of our recruiting just as far as getting out on the road and, and seeing kids and, and getting kids on the phone and talking with them. But 
um, there, there's no way I could do this thing alone. Uh, you know, I think it takes the support from our head coach, Robbie Britt, who's, who's an unbelievable leader. Um, and I think it's, you know, his leadership of our programs conducive to our growth as assistant coaches. And then again, you know, Anthony Zona, our pitching coach and, and Michael Blatch for our hitting coach and coach Porterfield, our director of player development. You know, when we recruit a kid, I mean, there's four or five, six coaches talking with them, you know, throughout the process. And obviously, I'm the one that kind of coordinates where if they have questions or they need transcripts reviewed, like, um, you know, I'm the link with a lot of the operational and administrative processes. But I think the less I talk to them and the more our assistant coaches and head coaches talk to them, the better. So, sure. you know, that's my role off the field. And then on the field, I'm working alongside our pitching coach, Anthony Zona, uh, with our pitching staff. Um, so, uh, you know, but but really overall recruiting, like that's my number one responsibility. I, I, Coach Britt, he always says, you know, you're more valuable to our program when you're not here in the building. <laughs> and he means <laughs> that, you know, typically in the spring, it'll, if I need to make miss practices during the week and, and go junior college recruiting out in Tennessee or Virginia, whatever it is, I'll do that. You know, obviously in the summer, I'm going to spend a lot more nights in hotels and Airbnbs than I do back in Charleston. And, and, and really, that's just uh, going to be more valuable when I'm on the road recruiting. That's that's cool. Um, I will say one thing. I say people talk to me, and and you know, and and all that. And I've actually kid. I mean, Andrew Andrew was, uh, you know, a guy that got in here, and I'm like Division Two. That I mean, I've never seen a coaching uh, a place have a coaching staff that has as many people as you guys. I, I was just sort of kid and I'll tell my, my people they're they're like the MLB of a division two program. As I said, they have, they have something for everybody probably have a coach that delivers the mail and everything else. But um, you guys, you guys are huge into the analytics, the, 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 the mental th the mental aspects of baseball and, and you look at it a lot and, and everything with your players um, talk talk a little bit about you know that the old you know the 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 eyes on the the, the scene in person to now you know you, you know, the exit velocities the the spin race the bad the the bad angles everything like that the I mean, you're there and I'm there. I mean, baseball's evolving, and uh, you know it's something that that goes on on like that. I mean, so how much how much does that play a part in, in everything that you guys do? Sure, Tom. Uh, you know, I, I think sticking from the recruiting standpoint, you know how I would how I would answer that question um, is I think every single evaluation includes a couple of things, but from a physical standpoint. We're evaluating tools and we're evaluating skills. So what are our tools? Tools is the 60 time. It's the arm strength if you're an infielder across the diamond or from the outfield to third base if you're an outfielder, right? Or, um, you know, a, a pitcher, it's, it's how hard he's throwing. I mean, whatever it may be. So that's like your actual tools. Uh, but your skills are, are how well those tools apply in game. So I, I think for us from an evaluation standpoint, you know, tools are going to get you noticed. You know, if, if I'm scrolling through PBR or perfect game or, or we're at a showcase and it's like, wow, man, that guy has great tools. Um, you know, depending on a number of other different things, I'm gonna wanna see him in game to see how those tools translate. So I think the hardest part for us as evaluators to figure out, okay, um, you know, which tools translate to the game and then really to what extent do those tools translate to the game, right? So like, that's what we're trying to figure out. So I think the, uh, you know, the measurables or the tools they play a part, but but I think as far as what's more important to us is how do those tools translate to your effectiveness and your ability to play the game? Um, you know, how those measurables basically play um, at, at not only the level you're at, but then looking ahead to the college level, do we think they're going to play there as well, right? So I, I think that's how I'd answer that. Like, you know, we take a look at everything, Tom, I mean, as far as you know, videos and, and rap soda reports or track man reports if they're available. But for us, we put a ton of emphasis on in-person evaluation uh, just because we can see so much more compared to just a two minute highlight film, which you need like high school kids listen to this, like you need that. Uh, but I think for us, we're gonna try to dig a little bit deeper than just that. 
getting the camps and getting out where you can be seen. Yeah, it's it's just so important. I mean, you know, from talking to coaches uh, that I've done interviews with, I mean, you know, going through this, the era that we are now with COVID and, you know, live stream has become a big thing. And, you know, while you can see a certain, I mean, everything is just sort of zoned in. Um, talk about talk about some of the the other things. I mean, as I, I talk to my players, my clients about all the time the the how you carry yourself, how you handle adversity, and everything like that. I mean, I I often will, will tell my tell my kids, you know what? They're here because they're interested and, and know that you can play. A lot of times, they're they're here to see see you strike out, see you walk two people in a row. How are you going to react? What, what are your reactions to adversity and everything like that? Uh, talk about that and how that, that uh, you know, goes into the recruiting process, Ian. Sure. Um, you know, I, I think like if, if we had to map out our process and we, and we have internally of what it looks like, like how does a guy get recruited and what are the big things that we're looking for? Uh, the first thing we take a look at is, is physically. I mean, does he have the physical ability to help us compete at the national level? Like that's number one, the guys have to have it. Now there's a lot of guys that do have it, right? So it's like, how do you continue to narrow them down? Um, the second thing we look for is academically. You know, so are they going to be a distraction? Um, are they going to be a liability really to what we're trying to accomplish in the classroom standpoint? Um, and the third thing we're looking for is do they meet our standards of character? Okay, so really at the, at, like what we recruit is what we consider to be our championship behaviors. So what we've outlined for the current players in our program and the standard for which we expect them to live by and act by and make decisions by, it's preparedness, engagement, selflessness, respect, discipline, and excellence. So like, that's what we recruit. Like if we want our players to live by that, we have to identify and be able to recruit that throughout the evaluation process. So really when we're looking at a kid, you really have three buckets. You have their athletic ability, you know, you have their, their academic, really history is what we're taking a look at. And, and then obviously their habits and behaviors academically, but then also, um, you know, their character, or, or I think some people would consider it to be makeup, right? Or, or just how do they handle failure? Um, you know, what is their, their respect for the game? Like, can we see that in the way they play? You know, do they play the game hard? Like, there's things within it, but I think ultimately like, we're looking at those three things. That's cool. And, and you know what? See, I, I, we, get, we got you to break down and, and everything, like everything that I talk about. And, and I can say, from my standpoint, I mean, you know what I do. I'm a little different uh, in, in how I do stuff for student athlete world. It's like you said, there, there's a lot of places where you can go and build a profile and coaches can search and you know hope that they get. I mean, I send out thousands and thousands of personal recommendations and work with people that way and continue the, the process of talking about kids and everything like that. But um, to get into what you were saying about, about the, the kind of kids you have, I can, I will say from my standpoint, and I go to, to different colleges, watch them practice, do this, do that. Every time that I go to UC, it's like, you know, you'll, you, you'll get introduced or, or you will go out on the field with them and and just the the respect value of how p how the the young guys i mean they don't know you at the beginning they come up hey you know introduce themselves and everything like that and the kids that the, the young men that play for you guys at uc are, are 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 great kids and and handle themselves well and that's a testament to what you guys are doing um want to get in a little bit now about uh, just going into baseball and, uh, you know, the philosophy. I, <clears throat> I think I have a pretty good understanding of it from, from ta you know, talking to you guys and Coach Britt and, and, you know, seeing you guys play and everything. But, you know, what, what, what's your, 
your baseball philosophy from being on a field to taking a young man from his freshman year all the way through graduation? Can you just say the last part of that, Tom? I think you broke up there just a little bit oh, on my end. I apologize. Yeah, the, the last part will, would be, you know, uh, breaking down and taking a kid uh, through the UC baseball program and your philosophy of taking them from uh, when they're a freshman all the way through graduation and, and past that. Sure. Yeah, no, so I, I think our philosophy and really the number one thing and what we're trying to do, Tom, is, is we're trying to create what we consider to be a transcendent student athlete experience. So like, you know, it, it, what really what that means for us um, is as baseball players, okay, you know, we, we want to create champions, right? Like we're going to develop them, we're going to coach them hard. Um, we have aspirations of competing at the national level. Like that's from a baseball standpoint. And I mentioned this in the same breath because ultimately baseball is a vehicle for these young men to receive their education. And we're trying to graduate leaders. So, you know, it's easy for us to get kids through college with a degree, right? A lot of colleges can do that. But we want to take the four years that we have them to teach the life and leadership skills that are going to set them up to be successful, right? So then I think beyond, um, you know, creating champions and develop them on baseball field, beyond graduating leaders and getting them a degree, but then also them having the life skills that they need in order to excel in life after baseball. Um, you know, what we're trying to do is, is we're trying to get these young men involved in the community and be a part of something bigger than themselves. So we're trying to develop stewards. Um, you know, we, we want to teach them that they can use their platform for the benefit of other people and that they can have an impact on others. So I think like when, when we talk about our experience and, and one of the first things we talk about in the recruiting process is, like if, if all you want is just baseball and a place to come and play and win, like this, this isn't the spot, right? And, and, and that's all right. That's fine. I want to help them identify that early on, you know, but do you want a place where, a cha a place where you can come and, and play and win, but then also receive a really good degree and have the necessary life skills, but then also serve others and give back and, and be a part of something bigger than yourself? Like then with this might be the place for you, you know? So really that's what we're trying to create, Tom. It's, it's an experience bigger than just the game. And ultimately it's four years that hopefully is going to equip them to excel in 40 years of their career in their lives. Um, whether it's as husbands or fathers, employees, employers, whatever their future has, we want to set them up to succeed and excel. It's funny. You, you mentioned the 40 year thing and my clients are going to say, did you cue him on that? Because I always, <laughs> I, you know, they'll ask me yeah, they, when, they're, when they're starting to narrow down Ian and their coach, you know, where would you go? I said, well, and let me just tell you one thing, guys. They're not recruiting me. I mean, you know, my what 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 I hold dear and what you hold dear are, are a little different. And, you know, but I said, you're going to you, when you can tell me that I'm going to like. I'm going to UC because if I wasn't playing baseball, it would take care of me the next 40 years of my life. And, uh, and that's what, that's what it's about. I mean, uh, not to get off here, but I mean, I'm just, I, I'm, I, I'm really getting worried about, you know, now, uh, they're looking into paying, you know, student athletes and, and stuff like that. And, just the overall impact that, that it's going to have on the college game and, and everything like this. Because you know as well as I do, and it's, it's probably, you know, not going to affect you guys hardly at all and all that. But when, you know, you start having kids getting, getting money uh, and, and everything like that and then others that aren't I mean there's it can cause some real problems and you know you know as well as I do being a coach it's like oh boy okay this is going to affect the culture of my team right here it's somehow some way so I mean you know um, through everything the COVID stuff and and everything that's going on I'm, I'm telling my people over the next five or six years that you know 
college athletics could change drastically and, and everything like that. So uh, I just think that, yeah, you know, I'm really happy for you guys coming on and giving a, a platform and you're talking about, you know, it's so good to have the, the D2s, the D3s, the NAIAs on here that go through the, the process and the, and the, you know, um, athletics, academics, turning into being life leaders and everything like that. Because, I, you know, originally that's the NCAA and the NAIA and college athletic me message right there. You know, if you have that opportunity to go, hey, you know, we'll set you up to, to take you there too. But I, I just think that sometimes it, it gets, you know, out of kilter and, and everything like that. Um, talking about UC baseball, uh, coach, you know, uh, Division two program. How many kids? How many kids do you roster? Sure. Yeah, Tom. It depends. You know, every year. Now, obviously, COVID. You know, that that's thrown us for a loop, right? So, like, e even last year, we graduated seventeen guys. Um, and it was Andrew's first recruiting class, incredibly talented group that just had unbelievable kids in it. So in our mind, we were expecting that we were going to have to replace 17 guys, right? And then COVID happened and, and guys could come back. And I, I mean, we had guys engaged. We had kids going to law school. We had kids going to grad school at different places. We had kids that already accepted jobs. Like you know, no one was expecting extra eligibility or even, I mean, it, you know, baseball is the smallest thing on, on the stage of a, a global pandemic, right? So, um, you know, and, and this year, you know, like on, on opening day, we're in a range from around 48 to 50. And I, I think for us, that's right where we're, we'll probably be most years. Some years it's going to be a little bit higher, some years a little bit lower, but um, typically 48, 50. Um, and really what we're trying to do on, on that, Tom, and something that it's just the visionary of Coach Britt and, and what he's trying to do, um, at the Division II level, we can play development games or development team or JV games. So really for us, it's less about, you know, what's that number that we have? It's more about what opportunity can we create from number one to 48 within our program? So, um, you know, right now this year, 2020, varsity level, we're allowed to play 40 games, right? So that, that's how many we're going to play. Then you look at the JV, the JV level. I mean, we already have 22 games on the schedule that we'll play at the junior varsity level because, um, you know, based off a few different studies we did, like the, the experience of our players at game speed against outside competition, it's incredibly hard for us to replicate internally, right? So like, we see a lot of value in that. And overall, like this year, if you look at our roster, literally about half of them are upperclassmen, about half of them are freshmen or junior college transfers. That's just the way our roster makeup happened after you graduate 17 guys in the midst of a global pandemic. So um, really that's what we're trying to do from a roster size standpoint, um, create opportunity for everybody. And whether that's contributing and competing at the varsity level, or obviously contributing and competing at the junior varsity or development level, you know, that's what we're trying to do. That's cool. And you know what, uh, you got, you guys were, I know, uh, you know, one of the one of the first teams I'm going to say to sit there and do and take take this approach like in the division two and I see now it's really a lot of division really good division three teams did it and, and all that before and um, I think that it pay it, it pays uh, pays dividends but um, you know I. I'm just very happy with with how everything is going at UC. I mean, like I said, we have a good relationship. Uh, Coach Britt's a good guy. I like Andrew and, and, and have always followed. And I just know know your program. And I'm glad that you could come on and, and share some stuff about it. Uh, Coach Britt told me, I don't, I, and I don't know why I didn't get on the alumni call, call and all that, but he's like, you got to get on the, 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 make sure that you get on there and everything. So I, I definitely will do that. But uh, you know what? I want to thank you for coming on and sharing uh, your story, getting, getting to talk some UC baseball, uh, 
you know, where things are going to go, um, how, how you guys go about the game. I know that you guys are, are dying to get uh, into that, uh, into the College World Series and, and sit there and make your mark. You're so, so close. <clears throat> and anything that I can do to ever help you guys, you know how to get a hold of me. I'm a phone call away. Uh, wishing you, the staff, the players, and I, I, I have one special one there that I have to say. Tell Colby that I said hello. He'll be disappointed if I, if I didn't didn't say something to him. But um, just great kids, and uh, you guys have a great Christmas, Coach. Tell everybody that I said hello, and uh, I will be down. You know, I'll be down to see some games. So. It'll be good, and, and I shall see you on the recruiting trail. I, I'll tell you one thing, though. I'm looking forward January 15th with with uh, the Rawlings Tigers up here now that I'm coaching. And, well, uh, I'm going heading to Fort Myers, Florida, and after seeing the 11 inches of snow the other day up here, it was like I can't wait to get into uh, some 85-degree uh, weather and uh, watch some baseball. No doubt, no doubt. Well, well, thank you for having me on, Tom. And obviously you're playing a big part um, in helping these kids and these families alongside in the recruitment process and you know, good people in the game that are involved in, in helping and assisting these kids in recruiting. Um, it's incredibly valuable. So uh, you're, you're always welcome on Zoom calls, always welcome around the program. You know, likewise, we're just a phone call away. So, uh, you know, Merry Christmas to, to you and your family and I'm looking forward to catching up with you soon. Oh, absolutely. And uh, tell, tell the head honcho that I'm going to be reaching out to him to get on here, too. So I see him plugging, plugging on different things. He's got to come on and talk to me. He gets the tough questions, not you, Coach. Hey, I appreciate that. I appreciate <laughs> that. You hang in there. Uh, like I said, have a great holiday, and I'll be talking to you soon. Thanks, Tom. All righty.